Yep. Well, actually, sometimes there's advantages to small numbers, so you can all interrupt me. <laughs> We're not going to be too formal here. Um, well, thank you, Gillian. Uh, thanks, Lizanne. Um, we, I am really the, uh, I do the front bit, <laughs> it feels like the Morecambe and Wise show. <laughs> you come on at the end going, thank you for my show, but in fact the people who did the work were <laughs> here. Um, the data was gathered obviously by, uh, Arc Paul is not even here, uh, Lizanne and Paul have worked very closely to get all that data analysed together. And it has been, I think, a very, very useful series, Partly because actually it's run since 1989. The longevity of the thing just gives it that kind of uh, advantage, which allows us to at least make some comparisons. And I suppose also you become aware of the weaknesses. But I think that this year, in particular, because we've been able to analyse a little bit more uh, granularity around locality, uh, there are some quite interesting facts coming out of this. Um, I the the document is there. I have added back. Um, some tables in for today just because I thought they did also add some indicative issues which you can't cover in 2,000 uh, words or 2,500 words but which in Lizanne's original paper were part of it and I thought when I looked back on them there were interesting statistics in those two so I've added a couple more just to kind of encourage the conversation. Obviously as in all data the question is how to interpret them. How do we make sense of all of this? And that is automatically a kind of people will bring different perspectives on that because they may seem different things. But this was um, what struck me out of it. Mixed messages um, that we've, if you like, um, the the kind of focus this year is we've taken the two kind of core questions, if you like, about people's sense of progress and people's sense of uh, expectation for the future. So they're they are part of the initial start. The second, um, and we set those in time, uh, the second set are around um, some specific controversial issues. The flags is one that we've raised in there, but also I looked at uh, people's sense of safety um, because I thought that actually there was some interesting statistics in that which just wasn't possible to get in. Um, and then the third one is around attitudes towards mixing as a as a uh, into in the sharing over separation type of question you know how are people how are we thinking about that now because for a long time and still the majority of people have seen automatically that was our way forward but are we is our political context having an influence on the way people look at integration now and um, that would have been one uh, an interesting question and the final one is around uh, locality that we've been able now because the district councils are sufficiently uh, large enough size that we can actually start to identify uh, some variations according to geography, which suggests then again actually only make policy more complicated because it means that the impact of things is uh, actually harder to manage. You don't get a single answer. You start to have to look at solutions having different effects in different places. So let's look at that. This first one here is the um, classic one about believing that uh, word. Um, the, you'll see there that the same pattern that we've known for a long time which is that in terms of uh, optimism uh, problems are marginally uh, more pessimistic than I think that's uh, uh, essentially been the, the pattern for a long long time but it's uh, the directions are very parallel there are some issues which we know uh, that when we looked at the 25 year sequence that um, particular events uh, have different impacts in total terms. But the, the most important finding last year was of a huge dip that occurred between uh, the 2010 figures in particular uh, and the 2013 figures. And the, that was clearly associated with the emergence in public of serious debate and confrontation on the street around contentious issues. Um, and flags, parades, the past being the uh, set of issues around which those confrontations were organised. But that community relations, again, did what it's always done, which is essentially follow the lead that it's getting from uh, the, the political leadership, but also uh, violence in the street. The, the two indicators which te seem to drive this are, when very, are very simple. That's where people look to answer this question. And so the consequence of that, actually, if you look in that diagram back, to 2002 is that um, 
that relations last year had dipped to a point uh, which was lower than at any time since um, the attempts to restore devolution in 2003-04. That uh, there was a very clear fall um, from that period. So what we've got this year is a modest recovery. Um, it's not, it hasn't continued. The trend that was emergent in between 2010, 2012, 13 has, has halted a little bit. But the total number, if you look at it, and it's quite hard to draw it across that smaller picture, is that um, taking 2007 as a baseline, which is the rest restoration of devolution, uh, there has been a decline in people's sense that relationships are better, people's uh, uh, since that period still, and that that is, um, if kind of bumping along might be the right way to talk about it, bumping along the bottom, which probably is not going to be a big surprise to anybody who's looked at the wider environment, which is this sense of uh, chronic rather than acute problems in the Northern Ireland setup. Now that the acute crisis was 20. Uh, 10 to 2013, but the chronic crisis remains and is kind of bumbling along at the bottom there. That same pattern of a modest recovery, but still well down on 2007, is in terms of people's expectations and optimism for the future. So the the, uh, the second one you'll see there, you can slightly better see the, you can't on that, I can <laughs> see the, the colour scheme here, um, but it's uh, the uh, that, that, that they've pretty much gone up in parallel. There isn't actually any, any evidence in this that, that um, the levels of optimism and pessimism or the levels of disappointment in relation to the past are changing in one community faster than the other. Actually, they're, they're pretty much moving in parallel. So those impacts of those in terms of people's sense of the relationships are fairly clear. So the big message is that um, they are recovered modestly from last year, but that the, uh, they have to be set in, a, in the longer term trend context. So it will be interesting whether, you know, uh, as a result of this year, when we, if it's done in 2015 or 2016, what happened, the 2015 results will be interesting. Um, now, um, I put uh, these ones in, which are not in the document, so we can look at this. The, the sense of belonging uh, question, I am um, what was very clear that locality continues to play a very important part in people's sense of who they are. So when asked about their local community, people have driven that down, uh, and that's pretty much clear across the board. But they were asked about their sense of belonging to Northern Ireland, and interestingly, there's no difference between Protestants, Catholics, and no religions. <laughs> it is uh, effectively, according to these surveys, that the uh, this is that Northern Ireland is, is as a brand, people's sense of belonging. When asked, did you belong to it? 43% said definitely, and uh, so this figure is slightly up there. 34% said probably. So there is a there is an underpinning sense in that in those figures that actually people now see themselves within, at least to some degree or other, within a, a Northern Ireland framework, which is quite interesting. That's different from the self-identity question: Am I Northern Irish? Am I British? It's a question about. Do I think of myself as working, uh, identifying within this Northern Ireland context? And the number of people who say definitely not is now a three one one two. It's very small. It's very small. So there is some sense that, uh, with all these issues going on, there is a a sense that Northern Ireland has a a, a being is probably too strong, but an identity and a reality which people have at practical level recognised when asked that question in that way, not am I Northern Irish, but do identify in some way with Northern Ireland, and that is a different question, it's important always to put it that way. Um, and at the same time, I thought, this is another one that I haven't got in the document, but I, I wanted to put this in about safety, because the people talk about safety, they were asked, you know, where do you actually feel safe? Um, and what is clear is that these cultural uh, uh, markers that schools, although they are separated are not associated with fear in the same way. Uh, that they are, if you like, different, but there is a, and there are distinctions, but they're not in anything like the same level of, of difference that you get with the wider cultural organisations, that the, 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 the cultural surroundings uh, remain uh, significantly 
uh, problematic if you're in areas where those are the main social and cultural ways which people spend their, uh, their um, recreational time. So in rural districts, that particularly that matters, uh, where you have rural towns uh, and outside of the Belfast area, I think those are probably more significant when you're in an out of Belfast uh, setting because those institutions play a bigger role in the monopoly of the provision of local cultural activity. So that kind of informal sense of segregation, which is slightly different from the way in which it's formalised in geogra geography and territory in, uh, in the cities. So when we come to that, that I think that's quite a, an interesting distinction. Uh, in rural areas, separation and a sense of separateness and a sense of fear and safety may be more, less defined by actual physical geography than by cultural space. And that, that, that's, that's interesting. Flying the flag, um, these are slightly random issues, but this was a, a, another, a third individual topic where we, obviously, one of the big drivers of community relations was, uh, distinction was the um, question of whether the flag in Belfast should fly three, six, five days. So this was uh, put in as a question to try to look at attitudes towards it. And it's interesting. What it shows is that, uh, that our majority in, uh, it doesn't tell you Protestant Catholic, I should say Protestant Catholic, no religion, no, I don't know why that's happened actually. Um, but the, uh, and the, the order of those I think, Catholic, it's Catholic, Protestant, yeah sorry, it's Catholic, Protestant, no religion, all, that's right. And so you'll find there that a majority of people in Catholic, Protestant and once even accumulated all, because no religion divide more between the other two options, uh, is uh, are in favour of designated days. Now that is an uh, interesting finding in and of itself. But then when you take people's second solution, if you like, <laughs> they're the, the next best option, they're very strictly divided. So the, they're clearly coming from communities in which the debate is designated or all the time and designated or none of the time. And so the debates along the parallel tracks of Northern Ireland's political culture are, very, are still stark. But what is interesting is that we are finding that most people are, uh, that the majority are still saying, uh, actually I've offered this as a, as a rational choice issue, which it isn't, but if you were offered it as a rational choice issue, you, the people put, come to, together around designated days. And certainly there's no consensus among any of the others. The, the only alternative actually, I think, to designated days then becomes separation by geographical majority. It does. It, you have the, the um, geographical territorial splits, so you would have national series where there's no, it's never, and Protestant territories where it's all the time, effectively. So that's a, a slightly a car to caricature, but I think that, that, that's what that will tell you. Support for mixing. I've lost all my headings. I don't know what I've done here. I've obviously translated these wrong. Uh, uh, saying much more a bit. Now this is actually, <coughs> though, the, the different story. This wasn't a Catholic Protestant discussion. We looked at the support for mixing across all of the different themes. And what becomes clear is not that there's anything that's radical, but there is an emergent trend which is across all of them, away from uh, support for mixing. What is interesting is what you get when you get the cumulative picture. In each case, there's still a majority uh, saying that they think mixing, more mixing is a good idea. But the, uh, when you start looking at um, the, the support for it and saying much more or a bit more, what is measurable across them all is the same direction as the trend. So is that because of the wider environment which is now not promoting that? Is it because of the, um, that people are now more nervous of it and, and regard it as something which is a, um, a a that fear is back into this picture, or that people have given up on it as an idea that they that, uh, or and certainly, although that we don't want to make too much of it, but we certainly have to watch it now. We ha that's that's a trend which you can identify over three years, so you have to start and and across each of the categories. So a declining uh, sense that that is the, that's the way forward, and so it's declining slightly, but it's declining across. Well, yeah. Marriage, yeah, marriage is different. Yeah. I think driving marriage is with more secularization than, you know, um, 
the rock and roll of Jocelyn and the, that type of thing, but to see that going down as well, even though it's always been much lower. But it's quite well, it's, you start to see like 5% gaps across, you know, and it's, it's, it's all of them. It's, it's, it's more of a kind of an orange flag than a, than a red flag. It's more of a, you know, stick one up here, watch this one now, because that may be, I mean, to be a bit political about it, the, the concern of people about the structure of the Northern Ireland system is that it promotes, essentially, parallelism rather than integration. And that the that the consequence of the Northern Ireland political system is that it promotes essentially what is known in the, in the trade, although I very much dispute the, personally the concept of benign apartheid, that there's a kind of volunteer, volu voluntary separation going on here as opposed to enforced separation. And so that might, might at this stage, I think we have to put it into there, it certainly doesn't provide any evidence contrary to that and suggest that there is evidence that it, this might be uh, one of the movements Hello, hiya, how are you? Which, uh, which is happening. Um, and that's because we're picking it up not just in one secondary school where people live, we're picking across the board. And it, it's, um, it's a bit of canary in the mine type stuff. I certainly wouldn't be working on it when talking that it was really all right to do, didn't recommend it, here's all the time that we're all. Yes, that okay. gradually if you leave people it'll all work. No, it, so you've got two things, you've got, um, a sense that community relations are getting worse, but also a sense that, of, of people becoming more pessimistic about mixing or thinking that mixing isn't an answer. So that it's just, you know, once you start to combine all that, it's, these are things which might start to become real lead themes of what's happening in our society as we go forward. Um, it's certainly something to look at. I think part of it, Duncan, is just the, the arguments are kind of shifting for a lot of those things. Like, likes of schools, we're looking at sharing schools on the and then marriage, the, the kind of the debate about marriage recently hasn't been anything to do with Boston and Catholic. It's gay marriage. It's gay marriage, hasn't it? So you, 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 of course, but the issue around, uh, for example, schools, you could argue the other way, which is that precisely because you've now said the goal is now shared schools, that it's a kind of it's not a promoter of greater sharing, it's an actually a resistor of greater sharing, because that's the debate that's going on about does shared education actually effectively embed segregation, or does it actually promote integration? And that's an intellectual, but it's also a highly practical dispute at the core of this. So, the, the, and, and that whether the, and I don't want to push it any further than that, but whether the policy environment is now promoting people to think of pragmatic separation as opposed to integration as a, as a longer solution to the Northern Ireland kind of issues. That might, and that's to be watched. I don't, I don't actually want to make an abs. I don't think anybody could, on those figures, make an absolute. It could reverse the trend, and five, five percent could change next year, and in which case, but, but the. I think the, the argument is made stronger by its persistence across all of the fields. It's its persistence across all of the fields that starts to make you go, right, what's going on here? Have we taken the foot off the pedal of the kind of community relations notion and set, settled for something else? Um, this is, uh, local variations was a very big theme in this, and so the two big themes were that mixing theme um, and the the possibility that we have this time that the data is sufficient for us to make some calculations or at least around some of the geographical council areas and use the council areas to give us some sense of some of the changes that are going on. Now, uh, this first one actually suggests that on the, on the optimism question uh, or the, the sense of progress that there, it's fairly stable across the board. Now, there is a 42 to 60. That's, that's a reasonable difference and it's interesting that it's more separated areas, uh, like which which have um, are at both ends of it. So it doesn't actually give you much of a trend that at all. You have to say there is local variation, but it's but it's interesting. Belfast in the middle, not at the end. It also suggests Belfast is not necessarily the in this case in terms of optimism the the uh, that. However. And this is the mo one of the more interesting statistics is percentage respondents who would prefer to live in a neighbourhood with people of only their own religion. Here, Belfast is an absolute outrider. 
uh, and that seems to us to be fairly statistically significant. In other words, that it's not, it's, it's nearly, it's a third again, it's 50% up on the nearest one, and the nearest one is uh, Antrim and Newton Abbey, so it's again the Greater Belfast area, so that may be affected by the same type of thing. Um, and Fermanagh, Anoma, <coughs> East and Mid-Antrim, the, 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 their, the rural districts are, are markedly less interested in that kind of strict residential segregation, but 40% is a high figure, and given the uh, <coughs> the taking down the walls stuff, and it also may suggest that the stuff that the flags, protests and the parades uh, in the last three years have had a particular impact on the notion of separation in Belfast, and that there's a particular Belfast effect going on here. Now that suggests that uh, if that's true, that's about how you would intervene, it may be having different effects in different places and, and what, the, 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 what you would do about that. Uh, we asked that we separated this one about the Union flag. This is interesting too. Um, the percentage of respondents feel that the Union flag should be flown from all public buildings all the time. Unsurprisingly, it's unionist areas who say yes. But what is interesting is it's not Belfast. It's the areas around Belfast who want the flag put up in the City Hall. <laughs> more <laughs> than the people in Belfast. People in Belfast are at pragmatic solutions here, <laughs> according to this. Um, but the, 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 it's quite interesting, Belfast isn't even in the middle, it's actually in the, it's in the, in the bottom third uh, of, of council areas where we picked up people saying that the 365 was required. Uh, and that suggests that it's a bigger issue for unionist culture than it is for the civic culture of Belfast. That is the uh, uh, that for unionist culture, this is the, uh, and for unionist politics, this is a significant issue in a way that's slightly different from the way it impacts on geographies. And so that symbolic question of what's happening seems to be, it, and it's it's um, interesting actually that, um, and this is just an aside from my point of view, the uh, the riots that occurred around the flag protests when it were particularly severe. The areas where it spread were into those areas which are very high, Newton Abbey, Carrick Fergus, uh, but also into Newton Arts and, and Bank and places like that. Those were, that's where it hit. But would you point out that <coughs> this combines 2013 and 2014? It's combined 2013 and 2014, that's right. Yes. 20, yeah, in fact, and so that makes it a, uh, in some ways, we'll have to watch this as well because it may actually change. This may be a changing thing. Okay, so what do we find? Community relations in Northern Ireland have recovered slightly from the tensions evidence since 2013, but with the exception of 2013, levels of optimism and sense of progress around community relations remain lower than at any time since 2007. Optimism and pessimism about community relations rare, uh, are, appear to be highly sensitive to visible political events and cultural disputes, and you know what that rare is. Uh, it's a rogue. The, um, but they are extremely dependent on the signals that are given from uh, top down. Um, and that seems to be, that's not news, but it is how people assess progress in some ways. So the political responsibility is quite high. Emergent evidence of support for mixing has begun to reduce, and it will be important to monitor trends in this area. So we have consistency across a lot of issues and that is a significant question about how that impacts or does it impact and it may be um, changing issues, uh, but how it impacts on community relations more generally. Adjus vary considerably locality with support for mixed residents markedly less in Belfast than elsewhere. So that is a, uh, a point to take note of, uh, but also it means that uh, the policy um, on mixed housing and so on may be differently received in different parts and may have different impact and support for flying the flags every day in Belfast appear to be lower in Belfast than in the surrounding areas. So um, now there are a whole lot of other statistics in uh, the occasional paper which uh, Lizanne drew together. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, these are the things which we thought when we were dealing with um, community relations were really the most important salient points that we could draw out from this year's set of statistics and re you know, regretting that against 25 years ago. So, now it's over to you. Thank you very much, Dr.